All right, so just got done unboxing my Fox Alien XE Pro. And before I even assemble it, I'm gonna go ahead and install this uh, linear rails upgrade kit because likely if you're looking at the XE Pro over the Masuda Pro or the 4040XE, it's because you really wanna level up your CNC game. So honestly, I kinda wish it came with the linear rails from the factory, but I think they're trying to keep this thing competitively priced. So it's nice that they give you the option to buy it without the upgrade kit. But since installing the linear upgrade rails kit requires you to disassemble the machine essentially back to where it came out of the box, I'm not gonna bother testing it without it. I'm just gonna install them right from the beginning. And of course, straight away, I'm just gonna add a drop of some thread locker onto all these holes. And in case you're wondering what a linear guide rails kit does, basically it allows the X and Y gantries, instead of moving along this little tube right here with ball bearings, it installs a very heavy duty guide rail. And as you can see inside here is where your ball bearings are. And so it just operates a lot smoother. And more importantly, it is a lot more rigid. So you can run a higher powered spindle and push the machine a little bit harder. This is what you'll find on hobby grade machines, and this is what you'll find on industrial grade machines. So I installed the linear guide rails, and then I went to dinner, and now that I'm back, it's dark out. So that's why the lighting has changed. But now I can start assembling the machine. In theory, it should take about 30 minutes to finish. It was only supposed to take about an hour to install the linear rails, and that's assuming you have to disassemble the machine first, which I didn't. It took me longer than an hour because I'm really OCD, and I locked tighted every screw and made sure everything was torqued down properly and double, triple checked everything. So my guess is it's gonna take me about an hour. There she is, all assembled in all of her glory. And I was right, that took me about exactly an hour and a half. So, I'm not going to say that it can't be put together in 30 minutes. I'm just saying it can't be put together in 30 minutes by me. So, super cool thing happening today, my extension kit came, finally. So far all I've been able to do really are just like pick guards and things, um, just because this machine in and of itself is not quite big enough to do a guitar body or a guitar neck. But now I have my extension kit, which is going to double the length of the Y axis, which is awesome. And that's actually one of the things that I really love about Fox Alien is that they let you get in for like relatively cheap. And I say relatively cheap because cheap for what you get. This is not a cheap machine by any means, but by offering a smaller machine that you can then extend the length later uh, via an upgrade kit, it's just another way that you can kind of get in for a little bit less money and then upgrade as your skills with your CNC grow and your projects grow. As you can see, this thing was way over packaged, which is good because they're shipping from China, right? So we want to make sure all the parts arrive without any dents or dings because it is a CNC machine and precision is sort of important. So now having unboxed all the parts, I realized that I misspoke. We are not going to be doubling the Y axis. We are going to be doubling the X axis, which makes a heck of a lot more sense because that's going to be less parts for us to switch out. But it is super cool that the x-axis already comes with the upgraded linear guide rails installed. So if you didn't already do your linear guide rail upgrade, when you extend your machine, 
you automatically get that upgrade, at least on the x-axis. It kind of makes the expense of this upgrade even more worth it. This is why it takes me so much longer than the recommended time to assemble these. Not to mention that I'm filming it, gotta make sure the lighting is good and that the camera is in focus. Also, I don't recommend that you use power tools to assemble this thing because this is aluminum and it will strip out very easily. The good news is this particular screw gun is horribly underpowered, but I'm still just going finger tight really and then I'm gonna tighten it by hand. She is all done. Heck yeah. This is gonna be fun. I can already tell. Okay, here we are. We're gonna make our first test carve with the 8040 extension kit installed. The spindle. Uh, I love that the spindle is controlled by the controller. How fast should we go? Let's start out max speed and we can dial it down from there. is kind of unexpected. I think my spindle just died. Turn the spindle on. Nothing. I heard it click and nothing. Yep. Spindle is dead. The good news is that the thing's mostly done. I can finish this out on the bandsaw really, really easy. I only have about a sixteenth inch of material left. It almost made it. That's frustrating. So I have this Cobalt Makita clone and it just like barely doesn't fit this mount. Like I could probably, if I pried that open with a screwdriver, I could probably squeeze it through, but I want to be able to move it up and down freely. So I'm going to mill out the inside of this. Now that's not Fox Alien's fault? That's Cobalt's fault for not making it a true 65 millimeter trim router, especially since Cobalt is marketing these for CNC makers. Uh, I measured mine and mine's actually 65 and a half millimeters. So that extra half millimeter makes it not fit them out. So we're gonna have to mill some out uh, to make it work. I could return it and get a Makita, but I really wanna see how this thing does. Come on. There we go. Yeah. Perfect fit now. Now we get to compare kind of side by side how this router does versus that spindle they sent. Um, I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot better. So I doubled the speed on it because this router really is handling it so much better than the spindle did. It runs really smooth and super quiet. So I think having to mill out a little bit on the mount to make it fit is totally worth it. And it's not even warm at all. It's like barely above room temperature. But listen how quiet this is. That's about as loud as the spindle was. And that's about half as loud as the Makita router is. But one thing is for sure, 
the next thing I'm going to have to figure out is dust collection, because this is ridiculous. I don't want my CNC shop to turn into a hamster cage. So <laughs> let's do something about it. So this here is the Fox Alien Universal Dust Shoe. And it comes with inserts for whatever router you're using. So you got your 52 millimeter for the spindle that came with it that we burnt out. Then there's the 65 millimeter, which is for the Makita style router, which is what we're using here. Or just use it by itself without an insert, and that works for a 69 millimeter DeWalt router. Now I'm gonna go ahead and guess that, yeah, since we had to mill out our clamp to hold this, because it's technically not a Makita router, and it's not made to the same exact same spec. Yeah, I could probably force it on there, but it is plastic and I don't want to break it. So we're going to have to do uh, what I already have done before. And we're going to have to just sand out uh, this little insert here to make it work. So back to the spindle sander. Now I did have plans to plumb that into my other dust collection setup, which is uh, set up outside my shop, but Fox Alien just released this, the HFS 800, which is a much more compact dust collector, which would be great for my compact workshop, so I don't have to necessarily have it outside, because, you know, dust collection becomes less efficient the more hose that you hook up to it. So having something that's compact that I can have next to the CNC machine just makes sense. So let's unbox it and see what's inside. It might be small, but it ain't light. All right, let's set it up. In case you all were wondering, this is what a real workshop looks like. All those other CNC channels that have clean, tidy setups, they ain't making money. Guarantee it. They just getting free stuff. Long hose goes here into there, just like that. Try it first on like half power. Too bad. Now this will be my first time cutting fret slots, mostly because I'm afraid of these teeny tiny dinky fragile end mill bits. But uh, these got pretty good reviews, and I just copied the settings from people in the reviews. So we'll see how this goes. I mean if it screws up, I can always just finish the fret slots by hand. Time to carve out a prototype guitar body. This is Purple Heart. This stuff is nasty to work with, and I don't think I'm ever going to work with it ever again. It's super hard, it's super splintery, and it's super toxic to breathe in, which is why I'm definitely going to be running dust collection on this. I already have a fully finished prototype of this, but it's a Tele layout, and this is going to be a Les Paul layout because I want to see how it looks as a Les Paul.
dope. Well now I feel like I have enough experience with this machine to give it a full review, so if that sounds good to you, then make sure you're subscribed, because that'll be the next video, it is a full review of the Fox Alien XE Pro with linear guide rails kit, 8040 extension kit, and the dust collection kit. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, I'll see you in the next video.